Caetano Santos Godino was born on October 31, 1896, in Buenos Aires. Argentine mentally ill criminal, sadistic serial child killer, and arsonist. He is one of Argentina's most notorious criminals. He is sometimes referred to as the first serial killer in Argentine history. He committed several murders of young children, attempted murders, and set fire to seven buildings. From childhood, he was characterized by his very short stature and lop-earedness, which earned him the nickname Long-Eared Shorty. From birth, he suffered from severe mental retardation and enteritis. Enteritis is an inflammatory condition affecting the small intestine's mucous membrane, causing dystrophic changes and impaired barrier, digestive, and transport functions. He carried out the majority of his murders using a tourniquet, demonstrating a pathological attachment to this method. Hello friends, welcome to the Spooky Tales channel. Today we bring you another gripping story about Caetano Santos Godino. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And so we continue. Catano Santos was born in Buenos Aires to Italian immigrant parents. The family was poor and dysfunctional. His father was an alcoholic and contracted syphilis before Catano was born. Therefore, Catano Santos was born with poor health and congenital enteritis. Because of his weak body, he was several times near death during the first years of his life. Since his childhood, his father has subjected him to severe beatings. The first years of his life, Godino spent on the streets. From the age of five, he started school and changed several educational institutions, where he was characterized by a complete lack of interest in and aptitude for education. He had extremely aggressive behavior towards peers and teachers, for which he was regularly expelled from schools. At the same time, he began trapping and brutally killing small animals and birds, as well as committing petty arson. Godino committed his first offense, the brutal beating of a two-year-old child, in 1904. He was eight years old at the time. A year later, he brutally beat an 18-month-old child, but both times he was briefly placed under arrest at the police station and returned home. The first time he was subjected to a relatively long sentence of two months imprisonment was on his own mother's denunciation to the police at the age of 10, when his mother, who was Catholic, caught him masturbating and went to law enforcement to punish her son. Godino committed his first murder on March 29, 1906. He kidnapped a three-year-old girl, took her to a vacant lot, and strangled her with a tourniquet. Then he buried the body in a ditch. This crime was not solved until years later. That same year, 1906, Caetano's father found a dead, mangled bird in his shoe. Then he found a whole box of their remains under his bed. The father beat his son severely and turned him into the police, where he was jailed for more than two months. Once released, Caetano no longer returned to school and began to wander. Godino attempted to drown a two-year-old child in a horse-drinking trough on September 9, 1908, but the owner of a nearby winery stopped him. He spent only 24 hours in police custody as he was able to justify himself for allegedly trying to save the child. Six days later, he attempted to burn the eyes of a 22-month-old child with a cigarette and succeeded in scorching the child's eyelids, but the child's mother intervened and Godino was able to flee. After this incident, he returned to his family home. However, in December of the same year, he was handed over to the police because of his continued criminal behavior. This time, Godino received a sentence of three years, which he served in the colony Marcos Paz. It was there that he learned, with great difficulty, to read the syllables of individual words and to write his name and a few other words. He also learned to count to 100. This was the end of his education. On December 23, 1911, he was released at the request of his parents, but almost immediately he returned to vagrancy and a life of crime. He attempted to be employed as an apprentice in a factory where he worked for only three months. Around the same time, he began to suffer from severe headaches, which increased his desire to kill and torture others, and he began to drink large quantities of alcohol. On January 7, 1912, he started a major fire in a building that took firefighters four hours to extinguish. Godino was arrested. At the time of his arrest, 
He stated that he had set the fire only to see what kind of injuries fire could cause to a person. He spent only a few days in custody. On January 25th of the same year, he killed a 13-year-old child by strangling him with a tourniquet. The crime was revealed only in December 1912. On March 7, 1912, he set fire to the dress of a five-year-old girl who died of burns in the hospital 16 days later. In the spring of 1912, he started two fires, which, however, were extinguished without the help of firemen. In September 1912, he killed a mare with three dagger strokes, but was not arrested due to a lack of evidence. A few days later, a major fire at a tram station was extinguished by firemen. On November 8th, November lured a two-year-old child by offering to buy him candy. He then tied his legs together and attempted to strangle him with his tourniquet. Fortunately, he was stopped and arrested. This time, he also managed to assure the police that he had found the bound child and wanted to help him free himself. He was eventually released due to a lack of evidence. A neighborhood watchman intervened eight days later when he attempted to murder a three-year-old girl in a vacant lot. Four days later, he attempted to kill a five-year-old girl, but was again prevented. Around the same time, he set fire to two more buildings. His last and most famous crime, which Godino committed on December 3, 1912, was when he lured three-year-old Jesuswaldo Giordano into a warehouse with sweets. There, he brutally beat the child, tied him up with pieces of his tourniquet, and tried to strangle him with the rest of the tourniquet. However, the child did not die. Godino then went in search of another murder weapon and, in the process, encountered Father Gesualdo, who was looking for his son. When the father inquired, Gesualdo responded that he had not seen the child and mockingly suggested that he call the police. After leaving the man, Godino found a hammer and a nail, returned to the warehouse, and killed Gesualdo by driving the nail into his skull before fleeing. The child's body was soon found, and the police officers who arrived on the scene matched the crime to similar cases known to them. On December 4th, they broke into Godino's home and found in his pocket part of the same tourniquet with which he had tried to strangle Gesualdo. Godino confessed to everything and was arrested. On January 4th, 1913, Godino was sent to a penal colony. There, he immediately began to attack his fellow inmates. The prison doctor was able to prove Godino's insanity during his trial in November 1914. He was released from criminal responsibility. He was transferred to a psychiatric hospital in a ward for mentally ill criminals. There, Godino immediately attacked two patients, one of whom was bedridden and the other in a wheelchair. After assaulting the patients, Godino attempted to flee. The court sentence was then successfully appealed and he was transferred to Las Heras prison. Ten years later, in 1923, Godino was transferred to Ushuaia prison. This prison was considered the most terrible prison in Argentina. The country's most violent or dangerous criminals were sent here. While imprisoned here, Godino, in 1933, brutally killed two prison cats by throwing them into a fire. He spent more than 20 days in the prison hospital as a result of the Sevry beating he received from his fellow inmates for this. In 1936, his release was considered and refused due to his mental retardation and Godino's extreme danger to society. Throughout his imprisonment, Godino was forbidden to receive visitors or to receive or send correspondence. However, no one wrote to him or wanted to visit him. According to some reports, he was allowed to keep his tourniquet with him. From 1935 on, he was ill almost all the time. He died on November 15th 1944, under circumstances not fully clarified. According to the official version, the cause of death was internal bleeding due to an ulcer. However, there is a version that claims he brutally murdered another prison cat, which led to his death by fellow inmates. It is established that during his imprisonment, Godino was repeatedly beaten and sexually abused. He was buried in the prison cemetery. The Ushuaia prison was closed three years after his death in 1947. After the prison closed, his remains disappeared without a trace. Today, the prison building houses a museum with a life-size wax sculpture of Godino 
holding his favorite tourniquet. As another eerie tale concludes, we appreciate you tuning in to our video. If our content intrigues you, consider subscribing and exploring more videos on our channel. Thank you for your support.